All right, and we're back. Today's video, we're going to be flushing the hydraulic clutch system. All right, so first thing we're going to do is, now this is for 14 to 16, okay? Um, Harley Touring. So you got to remove these two Allen heads first. And they are 3 16 Allen heads, okay? So we'll get those out first so we can get to the hydraulic um, actuator. Now on the 17s and up, you can't do this without removing the rear pipe. You gotta basically remove the exhaust system in order to get to this. So to me, that's a flawed, flawed design change. Come on, I did this before, I know you come out of there. There we go, see? There's your hydraulic uh, slave cylinders right here. So same thing, we're gonna pop this cover off. We're gonna get in here, I'm, it's tiny. I don't even remember, I'm gonna have to figure it out. I think it's a quarter, maybe, maybe, maybe smaller. All right, so there's the cover. We'll get this out of the way. This can go here. Now, next order of business, we'll come back to the other side. We gotta remove the cover off the clutch master cylinder. So before we do that though, I have to wrap, I have an old t-shirt cut up to go around this um, to catch any fluid that drips out of it. So, all right, like so. And that's what we do with it. All right, so now we're gonna take this. Now I do have, for this, I actually have a new diaphragm for under here that I bought because this one seems to be seeping a little bit so we're gonna swap that out with a new one so let me get these screws back out get that to there all right I'm gonna set you down so I can finish pulling those screws Let's see what we got here it's one because these don't stay in the brake master cylinder the screws actually stay in the uh the top, there's a plastic piece in the top that goes up against the diaphragm. So, all right, pull this off. Okay, all right, and again, look. Look at the moisture up in there. See that? And this bike does not sit in bad weather. Look at the corrosion on the cover. I'm probably gonna end up having to get a, get a cover. So I'm gonna clean that as best as I can. Brake fluid, wire brush it down a little bit. Let me get this diaphragm out. Oh yeah, this is much worse on this side. There, okay. And this is why I bought a new diaphragm. Look at all the moisture up underneath that. That's, that's terrible. So that's why I bought the new sealed diaphragm for this, you know, for the clutch side. Because I did notice some seepage. Screws are definitely tight enough. And we'll show you. Now look how bad that is in the bottom. So I'm going to suck that out, and then I'm going to have to clean out. And you can see all the, the corrosion, the black that's in there. So we're going to siphon this out first. Let me bring up Paul again. And then I wasn't working on a jack. You guys would be able to see a little better. But let me tip it. Tip it good. All right. So again, you see I had the bungee cord basically pulling on the bars to hold it as straight as I can get it. So, all right, let me get the Mighty back and let's suck that out. Clean that out and see what we got. Really. Definitely need to get a, I think I'm just gonna buy a new Mighty Vac. I don't think a hose kit's necessary. Oh yeah, that's terrible in there. Holy cow. Okay, now look at the color of that compared to the brakes. That's terrible. That is definitely not good. That is not good at all. That could 
it's a drain drain. Now, we're going to need to brake clean this sucker, no doubt. Oh, man. Whew. There you go. See? This is why you have to do this every couple years. And you have to, you have to keep up with maintenance on stuff like this. Because the moisture gets in, and then next thing you know, you're stuck on the side of the road because your hydraulic uh, slave cylinder quit because it's it's balled up with uh, moisture, and then it gets uh, what you call it. It ends up getting um, corrosion in it, and then it stops working. Now you got to get towed to a dealer and have them replace it, especially if you're on the road. We're towed home. Look at all that. That's terrible. You can see that, right? Yeah, see that? And I do this religiously every two years, then, which is why they recommend you do it every two years, you can see. This is their recommendation, is to do this every two years. And it's not just about making money, it's just... And more than likely why they went back to a, uh, a cable, cable system. Go. Get that cleaned out. Very good. Now I'm going to hit that with a little brake fluid and we'll top it off and go to the other side. And then uh, we'll start pulling some new fluid through there. That's necessary, obviously. But let me get the brake fluid. I want to definitely spray this and wipe this out with brake fluid. Most definitely. It's, it's a necessity. All right. And like I said, I'm going to have to get after that lid. There we go. That. Wipe this back out. About as clean as I can get it. Down in there. Little spots, little nooks and crannies where the stuff sits, but... It is definitely much better than it was and pretty much ready to go. And there you have it. Okay? It's all wiped out. See how clean that is inside? Okay, nice and clean in there again. So now we're going to fill it with some fluid. Do this first. Again, we'll top it off. We don't need the funnel anymore, so this can go. This can go back to the other side. Let's put the funnel away. Again, these aren't hard jobs. Not even, they're not even time consuming, to be honest with you. It's not that bad to do this job. And that's why I always try to show people how to do certain things because, you know, I called the dealer and uh, they wanted like $239 to do this. And it's it's maybe a half hour without issues. Now, of course, I have to, you see the corrosion on the lid, so it's going to take me a little bit longer. So, all right, we're going to top this back off, put some fresh fluid in here, bring that up to there, right to the top. All right, very good. So that's filled, and we'll show you where we're at. See that that's filled with fresh, clean fluid. Okay, and we're going to bring you back around the other side. You don't have to remove the saddlebag for this, but I left it off because I did the brakes, so I figured, you know what, just leave it off. And then this way you guys can get a little bit clearer shot of what we're doing. I can set the camera up over here. Okay. Now again, this is your bleeder right here. So let me get this cap off. Easier said than done, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, that's like stuck on there. Come on. I don't want to lose it because... There we go. Got it. All right. So there's the cap. Now i got to figure out what size is this. What size is this? And it's small. I don't remember because I've slept since then. Plus, I'm getting old. What size that actually was? Was that a five? Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Nope, even smaller than that. So I'm going to say it's a quarter inch. Or it could be metric. Again, I don't remember. I 
inside my corner of the church. How it all works out. A lot of part of my problem, as I've mentioned before in other videos, I've got a habit of loaning, loaning people tools, and then I forget who took it, and then I don't get it back. So, that's another one of my problems. i got to stop loaning tools out the people. You want to do the job, you bring it over here, I'll help you do it. But I'm not learning any more tools, basically, is what we got to do. And I am not finding my quarter inch. And everything but. I am seeing everything but what I need. Make sure it's not. Let's check this. Maybe. Okay. Nope. We're gonna have to use a ratchet, which I don't really like. Yeah, that's I know I have a wrench, but well, let's put it this way. I know I had a wrench. Had. I think mean, that's a past tense, right? As they say. I gotta be able to tighten it, loosen it and tighten it. Um, you know, while the mighty vac is connected. Okay, yeah, that that loosened it. If I do that right, I might be able to. So we're gonna see. I'm going to have to use the adjustable. I've got a smaller adjustable somewhere, but again, I don't know where the hell that's at either. It's my habits of losing stuff. That's not flexible, so we're going to go with this. All right. Let's get this back on here. Man, that fits completely over. So I'm going to crack it. Then I'm going to open it first. Again, if I had the correct wrench, we'd be in business. Come on. All right. It's like one side's a little bit bigger than the other here. All right. That's, oh, there we go. We're dripping fluid now. It's not what we want. All right. That can go on there. Now, we're going to do this. Put a little bit of pressure on that. We're going to run to the other side and make sure we stay topped off here. Okay. Are you pulling? I'm going to see if the level's going down. Kind of looks like it's going. Slow but sure. Let me get a little more pressure on that. Because what we have to do is, you know, again, you don't want to, you don't want to, do that and we don't want to take uh, and introduce air to the system that's a big no-no yeah see that's going down now very good nice keeping uh, basically 10 pounds of pressure on that we top this back off so that was about two-thirds of the way down and we're going to hit it again Did we lose vacuum? Yes, we did. All right, back to that. And we'll go back up here. That was 12 pounds of pressure that time. And it's not, it's not sealing, it didn't pull that time. Let's see what happened here. Let me tell if I... Oh, okay, I see. It, uh... It's pulling, what it's doing is it's pulling it down. Um, come on. It's pulling it down, but the, the weight of the Mighty Vac is tightening the, the screw back up, the bleeder back up. Because again, this thing is, is getting old. 
like me. So say when I do this and bring it around, it's losing, it loses its vacuum. Come on. All right, let me see where we're at. The cup is filling. No two ways about that. Oh yeah, there we go. Two thirds of the way down again. We're gonna do this one more time and then I'll top it off and then, and then a draw clutch will be done. All right, very good. Yeah, let's go to this. I'm gonna have to buy another wrench because you need it for this job. I actually may have one somewhere, but another, because I got tool kits all over the place. There we go, that's pulling a decent vacuum. Definitely pulling fluid through. Oh, and there it goes again. All right, let me see how much I pulled through. Again, you want to keep this master cylinder topped off. Do not let air get in it at all. Can't do it. Cannot let air in there. There we go. Now check it again. See where we're at. One more time here. Oh yeah, just a little bit more, and then we're back down where I want to be with fresh fluid. And then we know for sure we're all the way clean. Yep, definitely pulling air. Definitely pulling through. All right, check this. Yep, all right, very good. So now what we're going to do is get on here this up I'm gonna actually spin this up and see if that doesn't do it there we go it's a shame I gotta use this damn adjustable to do what I gotta do but it works all right very good so that's that I'm gonna have to spray this down break clean we got a little bit of fluid down in there. So we'll clean that real well before we put it back together. But I just want to show you. Look at how filthy that is. That's terrible. And like I said, that's just a couple years. So maintain your hydraulics. It's imperative. Because like I said, that can cause you to lose your brakes. Or lose your clutch. Your clutch slave cylinder. Again, if you have a um, hydraulic clutch. Not good. All right, let me fill this back to the top. Very good. That's done. Cap this up. Let me bring some brake clean over. We'll spray stuff down and clean it off. Do the same thing. The can's about empty, but there should be enough. Yeah, bad empty. It is empty. Let me get a fresh can. Always keep brake clean on hand. Always. Do yourself that favor. Keep it handy. Because you got to keep stuff like this clean. Really? Okay, well that ain't going where I need it. So we're just going to do this. There we go. Clean enough. That wiped down. Like I said, bike is filthy anyway. It's terrible. But I don't want to hook up my hose yet because warm today, warm the next couple days actually. But they're saying for next week, uh, oh, Poconos might get snow and we're probably going to get flurries here and blah, blah, blah. You know how it goes. Weather people can't predict the weather to save their own damn lives. Let's leave it at that. Okay. So that's that. This just goes on. Whoop. Green cap. Cap that sucker back up. Very good. Now, this goes in. There we go. And then we run these down. These actually had no, they have no blue Loctite from the factory. Which kind of threw me off, but okay. And then they just snug them. I did not see any. There's probably a torque spec, but I tried to search around. I couldn't find anything. 
So, all right, that's one. Let's get this one. Always put them in by hand when you can. And then just snug them down once they're all the way in by hand. So, okay, now. That's good. To the front one. Good, very good, all right. So that's done on this side, that's taken care of. So now we're gonna move over to here. And like I said, you can see the corrosion on that cover. I'll bring you back up and show you again. I'm gonna have to figure out what size that wrench is needed and I'm just gonna hide that. I think it's a quarter, but I can't find a quarter inch wrench. Maybe I should have tested a socket on it just to see where it's at, but too late now, the cover's on. So we're gonna leave it as it is. Go there, it's those. All right, now, show you this, look at this. See that? Hey, look at that corrosion. So I'm gonna hit that with a wire brush. We're gonna brake clean it. And I'm probably gonna end up having to order a lid. But for right now, it's gotta go back together as it is. So we're just gonna hit that with the wire brush. Get as much as I can and we'll throw that new, we'll throw that brand new diaphragm on. There you go. All right. And we're just gonna take this and I'm gonna do this with it. Clean as much as I can. Spray it out. Okay, very good. I got it, I think. Now we look. Oh yeah, see? Cleaned all that corrosion right off of there. And we're gonna wipe this out, but again, you saw the moisture that was inside the damn thing. So, this is why they tell you, you have to, you have got to keep that fluid changed. It's a, it's a necessity. It's not a, you know, again, it's not, oh yeah, I guess I can. No, no, I guess I can. It's a definitely, you have to. So you don't lose your, you don't want to lose your clutch. That happened to my friend. He had one of the recall bikes from uh, 17, I guess. I think 17 was when they stopped the, yeah, 17 or 18 was when they stopped the hydraulics. Maybe, maybe 19, 20, I, I don't remember, to be honest with you. But he's got a, he's got a 17 Road King. He still had the hydraulic master cylinder. And there was a recall there was a recall on that and he ended up he was on his way over to the dealership and they had to come get him and tow him over because it uh the hydraulics let go on him he pulled in the clutch and he had no clutch thankfully he was able to like speed shift it without the clutch up into neutral and then once he did that he coasted to the side of the road and called him and they had to tow him in and throw you know they had you in line to replace that they jumped him, of course, to the head of the line because his was one of the ones that broke down. All right, let me grab that new uh, diaphragm. I'll be right back with you. All right, now it's sitting in my kitchen. So as you can see here, we got a brand new one. So we're gonna use the brand new one, put it back together. Now we're gonna do this, Let's get this in place here. Pop that all around. Here we go. Spray it out with a little brake clean. Wipe her down, and then we'll be ready to go back on. 
and then hopefully it stops the seepage that was coming around there and then maybe that seepage is why the extra moisture was getting in but hopefully that'll seal all the way without a problem all right let me put this in place and then i'll come grab it okay You. Now, if you didn't have to clean that, obviously the process would have gone a lot quicker. So, all right, let me run these down. This down. And, you know, always go back and forth. Don't just crank one side and then the other. Just go back and forth with it. All right, that's snug. Get to this one. And that's snug. All right. So that's done, back together. And tip you up, okay, you can see, all done there. Now, we're gonna wipe it down, and I'll do what I did on the other side. We'll spray a little brake clean on a paper towel, and then we'll wipe it off. And then that'll be done. Clutch slave done. And again, not long, not that hard of a job. All right, let's wipe this down. Go. Done. Done as it's going to get. Let's put it that way. Very good. So that's wiped down. That's good. That's good. All right. That is done. And that's that. So again, that's the extent of it. It's not that hard of a job. I'm at, say, 27 minutes to do this job. If that, I had to clean off the lid probably spent five six minutes doing that going inside grabbing the other diaphragm so you could probably do this in 20 minutes uh with a fresh mighty vac ready to go um and if you have somebody to help you keep your master cylinder topped off you can do it even faster so again i usually work alone all by myself right how does that george thorogood song he sleeps alone right there you go so but that's the extent of it all right once again thank you guys for watching Again, this is maintenance that needs to be done. Every two years, you flush your brake system, you flush your hydraulic clutch if you have one, and I'm sitting at probably not even two hours to do everything myself. All right? So do this. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in whatever we're working on next. Maybe the new uh, air ride shocks I have to put on. Again, I want to get this ready to go for a trip. All right, see you guys later.